Objectivism is the philosophy originated by the novelist and philosopher Ayn Rand. Rand was a major intellectual of the 20th century. She was a novelist, but a novelist of epic proportions. She was a romantic in her literary approach, a romanticism of high ideals and dramatic struggles. And as a philosopher, uh, her novels exhibited exploration of the fundamental themes and issues of the human condition. As with any philosopher or novelist who pushes on fundamental issues, Rand is an extraordinarily polarizing thinker of our generation. One measure of Rand's importance is that in the decade after her death in 1982, the United States Library of Congress and the Book of the Month Club jointly polled their many thousands of readers asking those readers to identify the book that has been most influential upon their thinking. As one might expect, the Bible was listed number one among the readers polled, and Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand was listed number two. And now, a generation later into the next century, Rand's works still continue to sell at a bestseller level, and many works, both popular and academic, are written about her philosophy and ideas. I think the best way to introduce Rand's philosophy is by saying that more than any of the other philosophies that we are covering in this course, Rand's is an entrepreneurial philosophy. We can see the entrepreneurism in Rand's own life. Uh, she was an immigrant success story. She arrived in the United States nearly broke, but she pursued the uh, realized the American dream. She'd been born in Russia, Russia in 1905, born into a culture of religious pessimism, a culture that Rand despised and found profoundly alienated. Early in her life and university career, she lived through the early days of the Russian Revolution and the Soviet Union's birth, another ideology that Rand despised for its oppressiveness. She realized when she was still quite young in her early 20s that in order for her to live the kind of life that she wanted to, to become the writer that she wanted to, the intellectual that she wanted to, she would not be able to pursue that in the Soviet Union that killed off many of its uh, free-thinking intellectuals. So she actively pursued an opportunity to emigrate, and when that opportunity arose, she took it. She left the Soviet Union, spent some time in Chicago, where an earlier generation of relatives had uh, emigrated. Uh, she arrived knowing very little English, had almost no money, spent some time with the relatives, and then lit out for Hollywood, pursuing her goal of wanting to make it in Hollywood. She kicked around doing odd jobs, scraping together a living, working on her writing, and eventually she succeeded. She had a career as a Hollywood screenwriter, became a best-selling novelist, and an intellectual with a world reputation. She pursued the entrepreneurial American dream in her own life. We can see the entrepreneurism in her fictional characters. She celebrates entrepreneurs like Hank Reardon, entrepreneurial managers like Dagny Taggart, artists like Richard Halley, hard-nosed engineers and scientists like John Galt and Quentin Daniels, and those who combine hard-nosed engineering with artistic creativity like the art architect, rather, Howard Rourke. We can see the entrepreneurism in her admiration for actual historical individuals, such as the technical entrepreneurs of the Industrial Revolution, men such as James Watt and Eli Whitney, who created the new machines that lightened our workloads and mass-produced the goods that we all enjoy. We can see it in her admiration for the political entrepreneurs of the American Revolution, the founding fathers who created a new idealistic nation. We can see it in her admiration for the business entrepreneurs of the 19th century, men like Vanderbilt, James Hill, uh, John D. Rockefeller, who created the enterprises that turned the United States from a poor or relatively backward, undeveloped nation into the richest and freest country ever. And so in Rand's thinking, this raises the question, what enables a culture like the United States is to come into existence? There have been and are many great cultures, right, in history and around the world. But in Rand's thinking, the United States is larger than life, larger in its goals and in its achievement, also larger in its mistakes, but that typically goes with the character. In Rand's reading of history, the United States is the culture that most explicitly and most consistently 
absorbed and operationalized Enlightenment philosophy. And the philosophy of the Enlightenment is the philosophy that unleashes the entrepreneurial aspiration in all of us. As she put it poetically in one of her works, quote, Throughout the centuries, there were men who took first steps down new roads armed with nothing but their own vision. As children, most of us feel that about our lives. We dream big, we're curious, we're active, we sense that there's a big world out there just waiting to be explored and we can't wait to be off seeking our own adventures. Sadly, many of us as adults lose that childlike sense of excitement and adventure about our lives. We, uh, in many cases, have it beaten out of us as children, either literally or figuratively. Or sometimes as adults, too many disappointments pile up. Sometimes they're self-inflicted. Sometimes they're inflicted upon us by regimes that are oppressive in nature. But nonetheless, capturing that childhood idealistic entrepreneurial aspiration for what our lives could be is a central aspect of what Rand's philosophy is all about. And then finally, we can see the entrepreneurism in Rand's non-fictional writing in her formally developed philosophy with its identification of the values that entrepreneurs prize above all, the values of autonomy, prosperity, and satisfaction with one's achieved life goals, doing things one's own way with her formal identification of the character traits of independence and integrity and perseverance that enable individuals to actualize their dreams. And then in her formal identification of the social conditions, particularly the social condition of freedom and the protection of individual rights that will enable individuals to seek their own dreams and live their lives freely by their own lights. Rand speaks to the individual in each of us. You are unique. You matter. You are special. You can be anything you want to be. The very message that most parents in the modern liberal world strive to inculcate by many means in their own children. The achievement of your happiness is the only moral purpose of your life. And that happiness, not pain or mindless self-indulgence, is the proof of your moral integrity since it is the proof and the result of your loyalty to the achievement of your values. Consequently, Rand has very harsh words for those who urge individuals to sacrifice themselves, to conform, to obey others, right, or in any way to see themselves as a servant, right, of other people's ideas. Your life is yours, just as every individual's life is yours, and you are an end in yourself, to pursue your own dreams, your own goal, your own way, as far as your efforts and ambition will take you. Rand consequently advocates for a fully free society. Uh, society should encourage and institutionalize religious freedom and philosophical freedom, of course, artistic freedom, civic freedom, uh, freedom in one's sporting and leisure activities, and of course, economic freedom. And consistently with her individualism, Rand advocates for a fully free society. Of course, religious and philosophical freedom to believe whatever one wants. Free speech to be able to express freely one's ideas in any area of life one so chooses. Artistic freedom, if one is so inclined, both as a producer and as a consumer right, of artistic product. Sexual and romantic freedom, to be able to live that aspect of life according to one's own aspirations. Political and civic freedom, freedom in one's leisure activities and sporting activities. And of course, freedom in the economic and business sphere of one's life. Now, in this course in philosophy of education, the question for objectivism on my reading of it will be, what kind of education can prepare young people to live entrepreneurially? What kind of education system, formal schooling and otherwise, can provide children with the knowledge, the skills, and the entrepreneurial character traits that will enable them to live fully individualistic, self-responsible, and free lives? Now, Rand has a hierarchical view of the structure of philosophy. Metaphysical and, issue, and epistemological issues are most fundamentals. Those need to be integrated with a view of human nature, and on the basis of that, a moral philosophy, a political philosophy, and an aesthetic philosophy, remembering that Rand was herself an artist. Those are consequent uh, to the more fundamental branches. But in connecting Rand's educational philosophy with her underlying philosophy, 
I want to start with three points. One about aesthetics, Rand's romanticism. One point about politics, Rand's liberalism. And one point about ethics, Rand's advocacy of egoism. We'll flesh those ideas out, connect those to education, and see how, in turn, Rand's more fundamental views in metaphysics and epistemology and human nature then support and drive those later philosophical and educational conclusions.